Hello everyone, it's wonderful that you could be here this afternoon. My name's Kylie Reedman. I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Education and Students here at UTS, and I'm really thrilled to be here with you to celebrate our UTS Learning and Teaching Awards and also to recognise our national award winners here this afternoon. It's a, it's a lovely opportunity to come together to recognise these wonderful people, members of our staff and the team who are doing really great work in supporting learning and teaching. Our Vice-Chancellor and our host, Professor Andrew Parfit, is going to officially open the proceedings in a second. And we're going to do a bit of a two-hander this afternoon, so uh, we'll be moving the microphone back and forth. So, um, Vice-Chancellor, if you'd like to come in and formally commence proceedings, thank you very much. Thanks, Kylie, and uh, welcome, everybody. This is a, a terrific opportunity to, uh, to really celebrate the important work that uh, you all do in relation to uh, teaching and learning the experience of our students. Before we come to that, let me acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. They own the land on which the campus stands. They always have and they always will. Um, and pay respects to elders past and present. Also pointing out uh, the, the really important role that education has um, in, uh, in many forms of change that's so much needed uh, to improve the outcomes for Indigenous people. We know on this, uh, uh, this day where we're taking uh, a stance against racism in all its forms, we, all, we know all of the, uh, um, the uh, issues that are faced by our Indigenous communities. Uh, and the prejudices that have occurred over two centuries, the racism that's occurred over two centuries. And we know that to make a real difference in the future of Indigenous people, education plays such an important part. So we're really pleased at UTS, um, of course, to have uh, such a strong commitment to Indigenous education research that changing the, uh, the future for a better outcome for Australia. And what better year to celebrate it the one where we start to make progress in, uh, in responding to the Uluru Statement of the Heart. So with that note, um, let's just take a few moments to reflect on, uh, uh, on what we do for, uh, for students and what education does for lives. You know, as a university, um, it's almost self-evident that, uh, that students and education is a part of what we do. But you know, we hold together two really important uh, things of importance to um, uh, to our community at universities. We, we educate and we create new knowledge. So we impart that knowledge, whether it's to our communities or to our students in one form or another. You barely open a paper these days with, before you see the, um, uh, the jobs and skills uh, agenda front of mind. And it's jobs and skills and it's now that they're needed and um, it's very much focused on the short term and the here and now. I don't think we should forget the important role that universities have in the stability, the long-term platform that we provide for educating professionals and citizens for a role in the community. It tends to be understated today. Maybe it's just assumed because we have grown. We now have nearly 40% of the population with um, an undergraduate degree in the 25 to 35 year age group, which is a sort of significant achievement from maybe even two decades ago has shown the rapid growth of universities. But we should never take for advantage, uh, take uh, 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 for granted the fact that education is still not accessible to everybody. We still have a way to go. Uh, there's a conversation to be had in the accord process that the universities are engaged with at the moment around the unfinished business that while we have certainly grown participation in education, there are very underrepresented groups, including Indigenous students, including people from backgrounds, um, uh, low SES backgrounds and regional and remote Australia, people with a disability, all of whom need to participate and should have the opportunity to participate in education. And it's what we do as, as teachers in an environment where um, it is sometimes challenging to, um, uh, to, because of the scale of what we do now at universities, to have that really personal connection that everybody desires. And I know the work that so many people are doing because the value of that personal engagement with, uh, with students is really important. So we'll hear some terrific um, stories around achievements tonight 
about what, uh, what we do here at UTS, and that's a good reason to celebrate it, is because um, we have done so well in engaging such a wide and diverse student population over time. With 45,000 students that, that across a wide range of disciplines, the impact that your work has on lives, on communities, on people's futures is so important. And we shouldn't forget that uh, uh, that, that is uh, such a, uh, an important part uh, of a contribution of a university to the life of society. But it is changing. You know, we celebrate the campus. It's great that everybody is back on campus. The buzz outside uh, for the past few weeks um, almost feels like it was like in 2019. It's been a bit, pretty long journey, hasn't it, to, to get that back again. But we know over time as well that uh, preferences have changed for students. Their expectations on digital technologies um, to be able to provide education. Um, I heard a number the other day that now in Australia two-thirds of postgraduate coursework students are now studying online. So the tipping point has definitely moved towards a more flexible approach to postgraduate um, learning. Partly I suspect linked to that skills agenda and the, uh, the working and the flexibility piece. So our work has just got harder. Sorry about that. Um, it's got harder because, at the one hand, there is such a value to the social engagement um, of coming on campus and doing the things that we do as a University of Technology in our labs, in our studios, um, in the classrooms. But that's fine for undergraduates, and it might be fine for school leavers, and that will continue to be fine. But now we have to think of even more ways of engaging a very different and quite discerning population. Fortunately, we have Kylie Reedman join us to solve all the problems for us. <laughs> um, and uh, I think um, you know, Kylie's initial look at some of the, uh, the work that we're doing, building on the work of Shirley, who's here as our former DVC education. You've got two DVC education students tonight. What more could you ask for? Um, the, the, the reality is that um, things are changing and we need to take fresh looks at what we do. Um, we need to build on the strengths of the past and we need to be able to create opportunities for the students of the future. So much that we heard tonight um, is translatable across all the disciplines of UTS. We'll hear about um, learning spaces, inclusive learning spaces. We'll hear about um, integrated technology enhanced online spaces. We'll hear about global leadership uh, in areas like high performance sport. We'll hear about future proofing careers in examples in, in forensic science and urban planning uh, and areas like that. So much of what we can learn from one another uh, about what we do. Um, and it's my opportunity here really just to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your passion. Uh, and thank you for making a difference for the lives of all of our students. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. And I look forward to picking up some of those themes at the um, at the end when I'll make a few concluding comments. We're going to dive right into the awards tonight. And as I noted at the beginning, we'll be having UTS uh, Learning and Teaching Citations, then UTS Teaching Awards, and then a recognition of the national awards and citations. And if you've got a copy of the um, of the program on your chair, you'll be able to sort of follow along with me. And I, I'm getting a sort of a graduation vibe over on this side. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm really actually excited to uh, both present these awards and name some of the amazing things that our colleagues have been doing over the past 12 months or been acknowledged for in the past 12 months, normally for work that uh, many years of planning, practice, execution, reflection um, and change has, has occurred before somebody applies for and is successful in receiving a university award. And it is a really important part of a, a broader pattern of recognition um, that I'll talk about a little bit more later. So the uh, learning and teaching citations are awarded for significant and sustained contribution to student learning, student engagement, or the student experience by individuals and teams. They're in no particular order, and I invite each recipient to the stage to receive their citation and be photographed with the Vice-Chancellor. Our first citation goes to Dr. Anthony Nasser from the Faculty of Health for building leaders of tomorrow, inspiring clinical excellence in physiotherapy students.
Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for showing everyone. That's the correct procedure. So very good. <laughs> All right. The second citation. First time I've done this. Sorry. First, first time. time I've done this. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> The second citation goes to Dr. Cecilia Gravina de Roca from the Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology for honing early years civil engineering students as all round professionals. The third citation. A team citation goes to Dr. Rochelle Cantazariti and Professor Lisa Pont from the Faculty of Health for transforming pharmacy students' readiness for hospital practice through simulation. The next citation goes to Shan Dr. Shannon Lynn, also from the Faculty of Health, for empowering postgraduate health students to provide specialised diabetes education. <laughs> next, we have Dr. Kaysen de Silva, Wijaratna and Dr. Michelle Zebots from the Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology for improving student learning in the discipline of transport engineering. Also from the Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology, Dr. Fahima Ramazani, who is receiving a citation today for enriching IT students' learning with a new education technology. Another member of the Faculty of Engineering and IT, Dr. Amara Atif, for empowering IT IS students to be innovative with authentic assessments. Unfortunately, our next recipients couldn't be with us this evening, but I'd still like to congratulate Christine Giles, Tom Foran, and Dr. Lauren Smith, Laura Smith-Kahn from the Faculty of Law, who've received a citation for empowering non-lawyers to overcome barriers to becoming migration advisors. We thank you. <laughs> The penultimate citation in this category goes to Dr. Genevieve Wilkinson, Adjunct Professor Beth Patterson, Christ Crystal Meekel, and Associate Professor Maxine Evers from the Faculty of Law for empowering law students to master technology for transformational partnerships. Well done. <laughs> Wonderful. Our final citation goes to Miranda Kay from the Faculty of Law for promoting social justice through research inspired learning. Congratulations to all of our citation recipients. Thank you all genuinely for your hard work and dedication in delivering excellence in teaching and learning. And I think we can all see from the wide variety of citations there, just all of the different ways that our um, colleagues work to improve students' experience and student success. We'll now move to the presentation of the 2022 Learning and Teaching Awards. These are awarded in specific categories and recognise the importance of learning and teaching for both undergraduate and postgraduate students within the framework of the UTS model of global practice-oriented education. After calling each recipient to the stage, they will make a short three-minute presentation highlighting and sharing the work that they are being recognised for. 
So without further ado, our first award is the Individual Teaching Award. This is an award for outstanding contribution to learning and teaching, or an exemplary and sustained innovation in learning and teaching or curriculum innovation, or postgraduate supervision by an individual member of academic staff. I'm pleased to announce this award is going to Dr. Peniel Christensen from the Faculty of Design, Architecture and Building. Peniel has received this award for creating industry-ready property practitioners addressing complex urban design challenges. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, green to go forward. Got it. Okay. Green? Uh, when COVID first hit, a primary concern for me was to ensure that students didn't feel disconnected and that they would have a positive learning experience. At the time, I was teaching an undergraduate elective, which I had developed in 2016 as part of our new sub-major, and a postgraduate core subject, which was an underperforming subject that I had just inherited. I was lucky enough to have one week with my students prior to lockdown and to talk to them about to better understand their needs and to help empower them to take ownership of their learning journey. Students were remarkably reflective and open in this discussion and the result was a clearer understanding of the needs that they had for their learning journey and the visual, auditory and participatory learning needs. The diagram here demonstrates how those discussions influenced the curriculum design and modified the assessments, for example, to include a quiz because the students recognize that they might need some accountability to keep on track and engage with their online learning, as well as identifying the need for structured synchronous learning activities to support those online learning self-guided modules. When we returned to campus in 2022, I again engaged those students in those subjects in the co-design process, and this resulted in the development of a multimodal hybrid learning design, which I now use in all of my subjects. Canvas modules include a curated lecture series, which is presented as a playlist in YouTube. These include mini lectures, guest speaker insights, and curated support content using a variety of presentation methods to try to engage the students. The lecture series is supported by interactive Canvas pages, which incorporate experiential learning activities aimed at enabling deeper learning through reflection and application of the theoretical concepts in real world application scenarios. And self-guided modules are then supported by active learning workshops and experiences where students engage in reflection on what they're learning and why it's relevant to them as future practitioners. I find that this combination helps students become more engaged in the learning process because they see the value of the learning opportunity. Assignments in these subjects then ask students to learn by doing, to test ideas through hands-on practice and research-based learning activities. One example of this is that, in our that our industry partners have identified the critical importance of communication skills in today's practitioners, noting that executives and stakeholders are time poor. So students need to be able to effectively and succinctly communicate large amounts of research and be adept at communicating using a variety of media. Therefore, students have the opportunities to become proficient in new teamworking and collaboration apps, different modes of visual, written, and multimedia formats, and a variety of software programs. Ultimately, through this approach, I believe that students are challenged to develop their analytical thinking and reflective self-inquiry skills, expand their thinking beyond arbitrary disciplinary boundaries, and to think in a systems and networks-based manner. By doing so, they're able to think and develop out-of-the-box solutions to complex challenges faced in real-world practice environments. Would you like to... <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Peniel, and I think that really embodies so much of, of what the Vice-Chancellor spoke about in his opening remarks, so thank you for sharing that with us. 
Next, we have the individual teaching high commendation, also recognising an outstanding contribution to learning and teaching by an individual a member of academic staff. Congratulations to Dr Annabel Shee from the Faculty of Health, who's received this commendation for optimising students' transition into and out of undergraduate midwifery higher education. I am inclined to wax lyrical about teaching as it is a real joy in my life. Evidence demonstrates that sharing joy boosts well-being, and I do like to talk about the joy of teaching. So I've got these pre-written words in the sake of brevity. My award for optimising student transitions into and out of midwifery education, um, centred upon my design and execution of learning and teaching experiences in four first-year Bachelor of Midwifery subjects and the capstone B-Mid subject for the third-year students. In addition, obviously, to designing and facilitating learning activities for students, understanding um, and applying the knowledge and skills required by midwives, my purpose in teaching is to engender a sense of student belonging, belonging to UTS, the university, to their student peers and to midwifery. And this is one of the first slides that I show the brand new students to show my excitement at their entry into the midwifery profession. The Australian midwifery profession and women and babies urgently need new midwifery students and graduate midwives. Yet across Australia, Australian student retention of first year uh, midwifery students uh, is, is challenged. My slide welcomes new students and my teaching practice and the academic environment that the students and I create is fashioned so that the new students feel that they belong to UTS until the point that they know they belong. And it is the knowing they belong that enhances student retention and contributes to the low attrition rate of the UTS Bachelor of Midwifery. A sense of belonging is vital because clinical placements commence as early as week five of the course. So simultaneously starting at uni and starting in a complex and oftentimes confronting profession can be really overwhelming for the students. I call the students future midwives and I embed this appellation in all my subject resources. This quote on the slide is so humbling to me, it brought tears to my eyes as it shows the power of the small gesture. And this small gesture here is simply to refer to students as future midwives so that they can see themselves as midwives. And that's a real motivational drive for students and for student engagement. In the same manner, transitioning from student to midwife at the tail end of the course my teaching of the third year students helps engender their sense of belonging not to the university, but to the midwifery profession as new graduates. Learning activities help generate their, things, their sense of things I know now but didn't before. Student composition and sharing of haiku poems of their educational journey and peak learning experiences help develop a reflective space in the classroom where students comprehend that they are ready to transition into midwifery employment. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, for the high commendation and to those at UTS who support me, uh, Joanne Gray there being one of them, <laughs> um, and uh, I love UTS. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Annabelle. And isn't it amazing to hear how teaching can be a joy project? <laughs> Love it. Our next award is the Team Teaching Award, which recognises an outstanding contribution to learning and teaching. 
or an exemplary and sustained innovation in teaching and learning or curriculum innovation through a collaborative, team-based approach. Now, you've got to let me read out everybody's name because I'm excited, um, but I think it also points to, um, and both the individual winners have said this already, they're, they're individually acknowledged but part of a team. And that's a team with students, it's a team with colleagues, it's a team with learning designers, academic supports in other ways. So I think that's really important to acknowledge as well. From the Faculty of Science, congratulations to Dr Scott Chadwick, Kiara Devlin, Professor Shanlin Fu, Dr Anjali Gupta, Dr Mackenzie De La Hunty, Professor Dennis McNevin, Dr Georgina Meakin, Dr Manaranjan Mahanti, Dr. Marie Moralato, Dr. Sebastian Moray, Distinguished Professor Claude Rue, Dr. Xanthi Spindler, Dr. Macon Euland, and Miss Anna Wood. While they're getting organised, I'll let you know that they're receiving this award, award for future proofing our forensic science professionals. I'm assuming there's a spokesperson for the three minutes, although a collaborative activity would also be very exciting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, we're already starting the timer. Wow. Uh, forensic science is the study of traces. And traces are remnants of a past activity that can tell us about the crime, how it happened, and information on the victim or suspects. So tonight, using traces, we're going to investigate the case of the Forensic Science Team Teaching Award. So let's start with our crime, and we have it here, and it's bad forensic science teaching programs. And traditionally, forensic science courses focused on a scientific discipline and then focus purely on the tools and technology applied to forensic science. And this approach fails to address industry needs and limited students' development as forensic scientists. So as a team, we worked to develop a future-proofed program that would center around the trace, where students would be equipped with the necessary critical thinking and problem-solving skills to an adapt in an ever-evolving professional environment and apply their knowledge outside of a traditional education model. So how did this happen? Well, as a team, we expanded the areas of our focus to cover growing areas of forensic science. We conducted significant development at the subject level and developed external internship opportunities for our students. And as a result of this change, we've seen the program grow significantly since 2016, where it is now the number one forensic science course in Australia. And we've seen greater graduate employability outcomes as a result. And so we get to the final piece of our puzzle, the who. And this is where the metaphor falls down a little bit because technically the students are the victims, but that's not what we're here to do. Um, but most importantly, the students uh, are able to learn in world-class facilities and get hands-on and investigate their own forensic cases. And even online, uh, they have the opportunity to engage in highly interactive activities to develop their learning. And so who are our suspects? Well, pictured here is the team. And while we stand here tonight as a team, uh, I do want to acknowledge that no one would be here were it not for distinguished professor Claude Rue. From the very first forensic science lesson at UTS back in 1996, Claude has supported and dedicated most of his professional life to forensic science, and he continues to educate a generation of forensic science students into professionals 
So thank you, Claude. And so we reach the end of our investigation, but the case is not closed as we continue to support and educate the next generation of forensic science professionals. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next we have a Teaching by a Casual or Sessional Staff Member Award, which is awarded for an excellent contribution to learning and teaching or a significant sustain or, and sustained innovation in learning and teaching by a casual or sessional staff member. Congratulations to Dr Zosan Bolke for, from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, who's receiving this award for creating inclusive learning spaces through enhancing student belonging. I also have notes. Um, I received this award for enhancing student belonging. Um, if you came here to listen to my award-winning five-step plan for student belonging, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I have no plan. Um, instead, I have a story and a question for you. Let me start with my story. I was born in Germany, and for most of my life, I was raised by a single mother, a migrant from Turkey, who worked as a receptionist. My home suburb is famous for having been the most socially and economically deprived district of Germany for almost 20 consecutive years. Per capita, we have the lowest national income, the highest unemployment rates, and among the highest crime rates in the country. Statistically speaking, someone like me, coming from a place like this, has about a 3% chance of a university education. Going to university was my greatest ambition. Teaching at a university was beyond all my wildest dreams. To get here, I walked through spaces where people like me don't usually belong, which leads me to my question, the one that underpins my teaching. I ask, does everyone in my class feel valued, connected, and able to be their authentic self? I know this matters because in my own story, the answer was often no. So while I don't have a five-point plan, I do at least have a graph for you. Um, so belonging itself is not a strategy or something you do. It occurs at the intersection of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I kind of thought the slides would be here. That's, that's all right. Um, so, oh God, why is it going? Okay, so inclusion really means that the thoughts and ideas of all students are valued. Diversity means ensuring multiple identities are represented. And equity means offering individualized support to address possible barriers to learning. These three together make belonging, engaging the full potential of the individual, allowing them to contribute, and bringing their whole self to their learning. There we go. So as much as possible, I focus on these three elements. To ensure inclusion, I work on building students' confidence because confident students contribute and ask for help. To ensure diversity, I unteach the shame and minoritization associated with ethnicity. If you speak another language, if you know of a different culture, share it, use it, and know it is your strength. And finally, equity. Co-designing class activities makes space for students to voice struggles impacting their learning and enables me to adapt my class to acknowledge and remove these barriers. But what does belonging actually feel like? So I'll leave you with some student comments who can tell you in their own words um, what the impact of this has been. And I just want to say that I shared this award with all my fellow casual teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Zosan. I think we have a lot to learn from um, what you've just shared with us um, and to put that into practice in such a practical way is wonderful to hear about. 
We now have the Team Learning Futures Award, which recognises an outstanding contribution to teaching and learning or curriculum design that embodies the ethos of UTS Learning Futures strategy. For example, through exemplary or innovative active and collaborative learning approaches, authentic assessment, feedback and reflection, or blended and hybrid approaches. From the Faculty of Health, we have Dr. Blake McLean, Distinguished Professor Aaron Coots, Dr. Hugh Fulliger, Michelle Herlich, Dr. Katie Slattery, Professor Franco Impelazeri, Associate Professor Mark Watsford, Dr. Job Franson, and Dr. Andrew Novak. They've received this award for developing future global leaders in high performance sport. Join me in congratulating them. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it's an honour to be standing up here today and representing our team. Uh, and there's, there's actually nine of us on this award, but when we were putting this award application together, we had to kind of limit the amount of people we put on this award because we actually have a much broader team that's contributed to the development of this new high-performance sport program. Um, we went down this path in 2019, and a few of the key groups that were involved in this were industry partners um, who we had developed relationships with over the last 20 years. Um, we were part of the Postgraduate Futures uh, program where we had access and collaboration with a, a wonderful postgraduate learning design team um, led by Michelle Herlick, who's up on screen here and, and with us today. And also bringing in the kind of the world-class research that had been developed uh, throughout the school and discipline over the last 20 years. Cool, like how, do we, how did you bring this team together? Well, I don't know if it was me bringing this team together, um, but the, the, the collaboration process around it, we kind of, when I started um, the program, we had a list of 12 subjects and basically a blank slate to start from. So we're really starting from scratch. And I would say the, the learning design team was a key part in bringing all of these people together. But it was a lot of a back and forth process between um, industry contributions. We've had industry contributors to the development of the program. We have industry contributors uh, in teaching the program and the academics who were kind of working in a different way in this new online space for high performance sport. Um, key part of that though, industry, industry leaders, and do you want to talk a little bit about the consultation process from the industry partners? Yeah, so from this process, the collective expertise really highlighted that what practitioners in a high performance sport environment were going to need is critical thinking, translational practice and self-learning. So embedded in all our course content are these three factors. Yeah, we really thought about this through the whole process. So it didn't matter the, the technical concepts that we were teaching. We were thinking about how can we develop that critical thinking translated into practice and also develop kind of self-learners so that they have that journey of lifetime learning throughout. Um, and we've had some really good feedback from students. There's a quote up here um, of someone who was a chiropractor, sports chiropractor, kind of working in the industry for 20 years or so. And the feedback from him and multiple others is that this program's kind of changed the way they think about things as opposed to just being some content that we delivered to them and, and they're kind of consuming information. So that was really nice feedback um, from the students. One of the tools. Sorry. One of the tools. So a key, a key part also is well-developed communication skills and significant challenge to replicate this in an online learning environment. And when we were looking for content about how to navigate critical conversations, a lot of it was, well, set in the 90s and also not really relevant to sports. So um, you can't get more authentic than getting your Rugby Sevens Olympians to come and help you uh, design some educational videos to help the students get these communication skills that they needed. And based on this, and really uh, with a heavy integration from the postgraduate media team, uh, we were able to 
develop these resources for them and the actual assessment piece is some live role plays where students not only demonstrate their skills but also have to identify these skills in others as well. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the thing we want to emphasise here is that the, there's nine of us on this award, but there were so many more people that brought this together. And we think the really unique part about this program is the integration between the research, the industry, the students, and bringing all that together to form a unique learning experience uh, in the online space. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing that and congratulations again to the team. I think it really articulates for us a really great example of the industry focus and how important that is in embedding that into every aspect of the curriculum. Our next award is the Con Contribution to Social Impact and Learning and Teaching Award. This award is for an outstanding and sustained contribution which has engaged UTS students in learning activities and capability building that contributes to social impact. Congratulations to Dr. Kate Scarterfield and Nahum McLean for the fact, from the Faculty of Design, Architecture and Building. They've received this award for empowering design and science students to become interdisciplinary bio-designers. Congratulations. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kate Scartyfield, I'm from the School of Design. And I'm Naeem McLean, also from the School of Design. Naeem and I have been teaching together since 2016 and over the past four years uh, we have focused on developing the university's first biodesign curricula, um, fostering genuine opportunities for transformative learning experience across design and science. Uh, we have developed two uh, six credit point studio subjects, the Bio Kitchen, which provides students with an understanding of bio-based material futures. Um, it's a hands-on but fully online studio uh, where students learn design principles and practices for undertaking uh, biomaterials research and uh, biodesign, where students work in interdisciplinary teams to research, design and deliver uh, speculative biodesign projects, um, speculating on the future of fashion, uh, architecture, food, uh, medicine, energy and many more things. Some of the key questions that uh, we've grappled with and that our students um, spend a lot of time thinking about across uh, both of these studios uh, how can designing with biology contribute to resilient circular uh, economies? How can we embed sustainable and regenerative um, values into design processes? And how can we design with biological systems to address complex environmental and social challenges? And these are such important questions for us to come at from um, interdisciplinary perspectives. No one discipline can answer these alone. Yeah, and so like, for following on from that, um, we've been collaborating a lot with uh, the science academics from the science faculty. Uh, in particular, uh, C3 has been kind of quite crucial. Um, and in, as a result, a lot of our work is kind of a little bit algae focused, a little bit. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and so also in 2019, the uh, International Biodesign Challenge, our students um, got, uh, won the award for best student presentation, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the other thing is when we're thinking about the um, bio kitchen, we, Kate and I have sort of developed a whole bunch of online videos sort of demonstrating uh, material making and um, sort of DIY things for, so that students could sort of make uh, and reproduce these materials at home. Yeah. Um, and a really, yeah. I guess that was a really crucial format for us throughout COVID, but it also is a really interesting teaching space to be working in something that is tactile and about materials experimentation, but p to be doing it in, a, in an online environment and an online format. Um, we want to use the opportunity to talk to you today to also say a huge thank you to our students who've come on this really fantastic journey with us, all of the biodesigners and biokitcheneers that we have worked with since our very first pilot studio in 2019. We had 14 students and uh, 
by the end of this year we'll have had 400 undergraduate students from across um, design, science, we've had students from um, business um, and also from health and, and from various study abroad programs to um, take our subjects as um, electives as well. So a huge thank you to them and a huge thank you to our colleagues in science as well um, who've supported the development of curricula and assessment tasks and who continue to um, advocate for these um, really unique studios that offer these interdisciplinary um, moments of exchange. So thank you to to Professor, Distinguished Professor Elena Amet, to Distinguished Professor Peter Ralph, um, to Dr Justin George, um, Dr Andrew Kerr, Dr Janice McCauley, um, and from our faculty um, in design, architecture and building, a huge thank you to Professor Kate Sweetapple, Associate Professor Ali Crosby, Dr Tom Lee, and our other wonderful um, teaching staff in the studios, Dr Mark Liu, Ella Williams, and Alia Parker. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those insights. I think it's wonderful to see that cross-faculty collaboration really working so well to support students. On to our last award in this category, the Innovation in Technology Enhanced Learning and Teaching Award. This award recognises an outstanding contribution to teaching using technology that enhances student engagement, builds belonging and deepens learning. The award focuses on the innovative and deliberate use of technology to address challenges identified, such as through student feedback, arising over the past three years of the pandemic. Congratulations to Dr. Gabriella Quintana Vigiola from the Faculty of Design, Architecture and Business. Gabriella is being recognised today for empowering students through integrated technology enhanced online place based experiences. We're looking forward to hearing from you, Gabriella. Thank you. So, 2020 came along and COVID with it, and a lot of lockdowns from that moment onwards. So when we needed to transition to remote teaching very rapidly, two things came to the forefront. The first was that urban planning and urban design, which is what I teach, um, are applied sciences that are placed and context-based. And the second was my teaching philosophy of, of, about focusing on how students learn. So the question was, how do I provide high quality learning experiences in which students that actually need to go to places to develop the skills and knowledge that they need to become um, great professionals, how do we do that when we're in lockdown? So if the student couldn't go to the site, I brought the site to the student. However, it was a lot more than that. It was really a virtual site visit that was just the first step into a completely new technology integrated approach in providing an enhanced learning experience to the students where different types of techniques, including discussion boards, the use of mirror boards, and well, the virtual site visits themselves, uh, became actually paramount in enabling the students to build their place-based knowledge and skills and do that through an integrated ass assessment task activity throughout Canvas and continuous feedback um, throughout the course. This later became a whole program approach that was not only taken into the on-campus program of the Master of Urban Planning, but actually informed the creation of the two new UP OPM programs, the Master of Urban Planning online and the Master of Urban Design online. So this process proves really that technology is not just using Canvas and uploading materials there. Uh, it's not something that we use every so often or just to respond to COVID and then we ditch that. It's really a tool to be embraced to improve our teaching and learning experiences. Uh, this approach that was highly regarded by peers all over Australia taught us different things. First, that applied sciences and place-based sciences can actually be taught very effectively 
online. It also became a way of providing more interactivity to the students because they didn't only interact through the Zoom sessions or their new face-to-face -face, uh, sessions, but also through the discussion boards and through different ways of feedback and peer feedback. But even more importantly, it became a more inclusive approach to teaching as the students could access the site anywhere, at any time, and actually repeatedly, something that doesn't really happen that often in the on-campus experiences. Um, and finally, through technology, we can actually provide hands-on activities, as well as, as did my fellow Kate from the faculty. We can provide hands-on activities, which actually lead to a higher sense of belonging, not only to their own groups, to the programs, but also to UTS as an institution. So the main lesson to be learned uh, is that actually through technology, we can really enhance learning and teaching experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella. What a great example of technology enhancing learning. Join with me, colleagues, in giving Gabriella and all of our Learning and Teaching Award winners another round of applause. Congratulations to all the recipients. We're now going to change pace slightly to acknowledge the UTS winners in the Australian Awards for University Teaching. These were established by the Australian government some time ago to recognise and celebrate excellence in university teaching across the entire sector. They recognise the impact that educators have on learning and teaching experiences and outcomes for university students. The current chair of Universities Australia, Professor John Dewar from La Trobe, notes that they recognise educators who make millions of dreams come true each year. So I encourage the people who've won internal awards to think about that because they have also done the same thing and it would be great to see that level of recognition for the excellent work that happens at UTS at the national level. So these awards represent the highest level of national recognition for our teachers. They are not easy to win and it's a testament to the work of our educators um, in that several of our colleagues were honoured. The first award is a program award for programs that enhance learning. In 2022, there were just four program awards given nationally. So it's pretty exciting that UTS was able to win one of them. This award goes to the Embedding English Language Program team. Dr. Rosalie Goldsmith, Associate Professor Caroline Havery, Mr. Neil James, Dr. Emily Edwards, Dr. Deborah Nixon, and Mr. Joseph Yeo. The teams received this award for enhancing learning and providing student experiences that support diversity and inclusive practices. You won't get to hear from them directly, but I'll tell you that the program they deliver has a positive impact on students, curriculum design and assessment in faculties across UTS, and it has enhanced faculty teaching practices. It is recognised both nationally and internationally as a leader in its field in the provision of disciplinary language support for international and domestic students. Congratulations to the entire team. there were two citations for outstanding contributions to student learning. It's worth noting that both program awards and citations are assessed by a panel of experienced peers from across the sector. So re receiving a citation means that the work has been judged as having a level of merit worthy of national recognition. And I'd like to also recognise that our internal awards go through the same rigorous process. The first citation goes to Associate Professor Carmel Foley and Miss Meg Hibbins from the Event Creation Lab. <laughs> the, 
Their citation was for an innovative subject that inspires students, engaging them in developing professional capabilities for transitioning to employment and contributing to social justice. The second citation was for a team, and it was awarded to Dr. Jackie Pick, Professor Tracy Levitt-Jones, Miss Natalie Govind, Dr. Samantha Jakimowitz, Dr. Fiona Orr, Miss Sue Dean, Professor Michelle Kelly, and Professor Jane McGuire for a project called the Virtual Empathy Museum. They won this citation for developing healthcare students' empathy skills. Congratulations to the team. And I'm very pleased to let everybody know that UTS is going to host the state awards ceremony for, for this level of awards later on in the year. And that's where all the New South Wales and ACT universities uh, who've won national awards come together with family and friends to celebrate. So I'm really excited about having that here. For this year's awards, and we're nearly done, I was asked to provide some insights and reflections on the role that recognition in supporting teaching, uh, that role that recognition plays in supporting teaching innovation and quality. I'm really pleased to do so my first, at my first ceremony as the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Education and Students, only three months into the job. I want to thank you all for the very warm welcome and reception that I've had since I've been here. I want to formally acknowledge the presence of Professor Shirley Alexander, UTS's previous DVC education and students. It's clear that as a result of Shirley's leadership, recognition of UTS learning and teaching um, is strong and evidence of innovation and quality is everywhere. I feel really lucky to join an organisation where the quality of the students' experience and their success is such a motivating force across the staff. Shirley, thank you for coming to this event to celebrate with us. I'd like to also acknowledge my executive colleagues who are in the room, uh, deans and other members of the senior exec who support learning and teaching quality. Um, I also want to acknowledge family, friends and especially children who are here. I promise we're nearly done. <laughs> and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing your parent or, or adult person uh, be recognised and trust me, it's really good work that they're doing. Teaching well matters. It matters to our students, it matters to our staff. They're these things are obvious, but as the Vice-Chancellor noted earlier, teaching well also matters to our communities, to society. It matters for our collective future. Recognising teaching innovation and teaching quality is but one way that we can say thank you to those staff who've committed to teaching well. And in a broader sense, it's a way of encouraging others to follow suit, to learn the art and science of teaching and to apply those lessons when engaging and guiding students through the challenging process of learning. I want to briefly note that UTS does many things to support and celebrate quality teaching but we also recognise more can be done. Academic staff usually have to focus on both research and teaching. And while these should and do feed into each other for benefit of student learning and for research strength, for an individual academic, sometimes these are hard to balance. There's never enough hours in the day to pursue all of our passions. And sometimes that leads to hard decisions having to be made around trajectory and focus. Therefore, as a university, we have to actively look for how to smooth pathways for academics to incorporate recognition of quality teaching, teaching leadership and scholarship in learning and teaching. These are important components and valued components of academic work, as we've had demonstrated so well to us tonight. What does it mean to teach well? It involves expertise, effort, engagement, energy, endurance, 
possibly many other capabilities that don't begin with E and therefore can't be included in this list. As we've seen, it's no longer a localised or isolated effort. In fact, teaching well increasingly involves a whole team. It requires consulting with industry, talking to students, planning, designing, choosing and sequencing key knowledge areas, writing learning outcomes and constructively aligning them with teaching activities and assessment, facilitating and engaging learners, enabling group work, filming videos, recording podcasts, considering the impact of artificial intelligence on our future. It's not a task for the faint-hearted. In fact, it's a task for the big-hearted, for the open-hearted, for the warm-hearted. Learning involves the whole person. It is a human-centred activity that involves a group of people who want to know more, who desire through education to change their lives, coming together with educators who enable that to happen. Our students are three-dimensional and they bring their full selves to the learning. We don't only impact on them cognitively, but behaviourally and emotionally as well. Education, as we've heard, has a transformative power. And I'm sure many of us here tonight can attest to the impact the opportunity for a university education has had on our lives, as we've heard shared so eloquently by some of the award winners tonight. The indicators for teaching quality on our National Student Experience Survey ask students from all universities to rate their experiences against statements like, teaching staff actively engage students, teaching staff provide constructive feedback, teaching staff provide intellectual stimulation, teaching staff set challenging assessments. And I suppose they're the kinds of statements you'd expect students to give feedback on in a higher education learning environment. But the survey also includes statements that speak to a broader purpose. Teaching staff were helpful and approachable. They were concerned about student learning. They explained coursework and assessment. They gave students a sense of belonging to the institution. These are powerful statements that speak to a broader purpose that are about academic engagement, but also belonging, well-being and partnerships, especially with students, to support them to achieve their academic and personal goals. It's not a small undertaking. Teaching well is also what makes me feel amazing as an educator. When you see students enter and then emerge from that liminal space which feels sometimes very difficult for students when they're in it, between what was known and what is yet to be known. The challenge and delight when you see learning happen. And sometimes it doesn't happen in the immediate space. But perhaps a couple of years later, when you see that student graduate and walk across the stage, you know that you've had a small part to play in changing that person's future and maybe changing their family's future trajectory, maybe changing their community, maybe changing the world. That doesn't happen accidentally. It's because of educators like our colleagues here tonight and the result of their thoughtful design and teaching that engages students and enables their learning. Congratulations to each of you for orchestrating this with and for your students. I mentioned earlier that teaching well matters to society and to our collective future, and I think it does in a few simple and powerful ways. First, the obvious. Without university educators, there are no professionals qualified to support the professions of the future. No nurses, teachers, lawyers, pharmacists, designers, architects, scientists, engineers. I was going to list all of the professions that we graduate, but it's too long a list. Universities are also fertile ground for the development of creative of all kind. Entrepreneurs, business leaders, innovators, professionals that might not require a degree to practice, but those who certainly benefit from that experience. Among many other things, university develops creative and critical thinking. We work to educate people who can lead change to help our society crack the big challenges presented by the current state of the world, articulated in the Sustainable Development Goals. We educate people who are 
literally going to save our world. And that's a pretty exciting thing to be involved in, in my opinion. Effective teaching can help students develop a sense of social responsibility, a desire to make the world a more just, equitable and inclusive place. It encourages them to address societal challenges such as inequality, poverty and environmental degradation. By producing graduates who are committed to making a positive contribution to society, universities play an important role in shaping our future, which is exactly what is needed right now. So this is why teaching well matters. That's why we are all here and have the privilege to celebrate these remarkable educators whose daily work is to change the world. Thank you and thank, join me in thanking them uh, once again. On a final note, I want to thank everybody else who's here tonight for attending this evening and for supporting the work of tonight's award winners, and I particularly speak to family and friends on that note. I'll now invite the Vice-Chancellor to close the formal proceedings for this evening. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. Thank you, Kylie. Um, look, it's been terrific to work with Kylie as she's settled into uh, uh, the, uh, the role of four months, I think you said. Um, it's a short time, but such a huge impact and understanding of, uh, of what we do at UTS. Uh, Kylie was at Murdoch University before coming to us, and she also had in the portfolio uh, the equity and inclusion agenda that so closely aligns with so much of what we do. So, Kylie, thanks for your reflections, and thank you for a moment of time. Lots of hard work to do in the years ahead. Um, but we've heard the reason why we do it and the impact that it has. We often talk about the, uh, the role of universities in their community, but you should remember always the universities, is not, it's not the buildings, um, it's not the construct, it's you and the work that you do that makes the difference that we talk about. Thank you again for doing it. Um, you are role models for your colleagues, um, your inspiration to your students and to all of us, uh, and don't forget the important... Uh, uh, work that uh, you do which changes lives. So on that note, bang on 5.18 I think, pretty close to time, well done. This is probably the first event I've been to since I've been Vice-Chancellor that's actually finished right on time. Um, we're standing between you and some uh, refreshments outside to celebrate your achievements. Um, good luck with, uh, with what you do next. I look forward to, uh, to seeing the exciting outcomes of that great work um, that we spoke about tonight. So enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>